Here we go, back to E4, I guess. Angelo. From Italy. <clears throat> French defense. Ah, he plays the win hour. So I'm going to try my... Uh, my pet variation here. <clears throat> oh, he didn't take the pawn. <clears throat> so if he takes the pawn, then your queen can come out with an attack on the two pawns and you get one of them back. <clears throat> but since he just attacked here, I guess I have to uh, push forward. So he found a way of transposing back into the, the main line of the win hour. I guess. I'll try and uh, build up on the king side here. And then uh, get castled. So I'm going to push the f-pawn forward when I get the chance. <clears throat> Should I sacrifice that pawn? Or defend it? I mean, I could put the bishop here. He takes, I take. It's all okay. If he pushes this pawn forward, it closes the center down. And, uh, and my bishop just retreats here. I think that's okay as well. But the closed center have better chances of attacking on the king side. And so he works to bust up the center. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to just bring my queen over. He might push, but that does give my knight an outpost here on... Uh, g5. If he pushes. If he takes, I'm planning to take back. So he does neither. <clears throat> Brings his queen back to this king side. Maybe that uh, makes sense. I might push my pawn anyway. After I push and he takes, I can play. Uh, so he did decide to close it. So let's go here. Hitting the loose pawn here. And I could go here, I guess. Threaten um, h3. h6, rather. Threaten on h6. So. <clears throat> Can I do something clever here? Not seeing it. I think I may have to move my king over, put my rook on the G file and just push, push that way. Hmm, maybe it's an idea to walk my king out the other way, but <clears throat> seems like it would be a problem. Yeah, seems like the king would just get in the way on, uh, on f7 or e8. Can't see going all the way up to e3, rather, <laughs> f2 or e1. <laughs> e3, even e3 would be in the way of this bishop, but this bishop probably wants to come around. Yeah, let's go ahead and open things up here. He may be planning some kind of uh, <clears throat> sacrifice along this diagonal to open it up. 
Okay, let's put the, the rook on the g file. This is protected by the bishop. Ah, oh, he's going to put a knight there. Ah. Yep, he did. Now let's take. Can't take with the queen. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, there is a mate there. <clears throat> okay, I'll take that. There's probably some trick there, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. I mean, he's probably hoping to get something going along this diagonal, but is there anything there, really? Okay, he can lift his uh, rook up to chase my queen away. Let's um, start to bring... Oh, oh, the queen is hitting here. Okay, so let's go here then. And... Um, if I attack his queen... He will have to move it because if he takes my queen, I'll take his queen <clears throat> and I'll be a piece up. So I go here. He might play queen takes rook, but then I can take with the bishop. Probably simpler to uh, just retreat. Bring my rook to the center. That was an interesting choice. I don't know why the rick went there. Oh, it went there to defend this pawn. That was the idea. Um, oh, no, it's still not mate. Queen can't take there, though. <clears throat> I guess I can um, double. That won't actually help, will it, in terms of getting getting through for the mate? <laughs> He's more concerned about this pawn. Let's see, if I take there with check and bishop takes, rook takes, rook takes, wing takes, rook takes. Yeah, he's got that covered. Um, and if I go here... Yeah, that doesn't seem to help. <clears throat> Give my king a, a space to move forward into in case this diagonal does open up on against my will here. Queen check there, I can block, and the queen has no other check. And I'm covering all these squares that it comes in on this diagonal, so I don't know where it can go. Back. 
It can go back. Okay, I can get a trade in here. <clears throat> so let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, he's still got that covered. <laughs> Let's uh, see if I can make use of this dark squared bishop. Put it here and then get my rook. So bishop here and uh, rook there seems pretty good. So his plan is to just trade, okay. Let's get the queen back to uh, this spot. Oh, he doesn't want to trade right away, huh? <clears throat> So I go there, let's see if he runs in and tries to check me. This is covered and this is covered. He could come into uh, e3. Yeah, and I don't have a check here. I have some ideas. He can start taking pawns with his queen. Yeah, that hits this bishop. But um, this threatens mate. I'm low on time here. <clears throat> kind of pay attention, I guess. Yeah, he went for the check, but what's the what's the follow up? On oh, the follow up is that check. Okay, let's see if he can keep keep finding checks here. Don't think there's a check after that. <clears throat> and his queen is hanging. And mate is hanging. The pawn covers this square, bishop covers this square. Or else can he check me? He can't check me from this diagonal because his own pawn's in the way. And this bishop was useless the whole game. Ah, he resigned. Okay, nice game. Well, let's see if we can uh, get a rapid game then. Yeah, good to win. A good win against a higher rated player. <clears throat> Stalemate 20, 1930. Okay, Sicilian. Plays the knight c3. Okay, yeah, knight c3 is often a prelude to the uh, Grand Prix attack because it prevents uh, d5, a way of equalizing against the direct Grand Prix, the tall counter gambit. So I guess I should play a fianchetto here, try and own the dark squares if I can. Mm -hmm. well, that's an interesting mix. I don't usually do that. I can move the knight because I haven't uh, haven't pushed this pawn forward. So it's not pinned. If he takes, I can take back with the bishop so I don't even have to uh, mess up my pawns if I don't want to. 
<clears throat> hey, this pawn here might be good. But it might come under attack too. I guess I'd rather take with the bishop. Oh, he says he, he, I can have his bishop. I like that. I'll take the bishop here if I can get it. Let's kick that knight back immediately. Now, one plan is for him to push uh, with e5 and then try and shut this bishop in. Or wait until I play knight of six and then play e5, forcing me to move my knight again. <clears throat> so I could just take. Not have to worry about that. So I gave up. I, I won the bishop pair advantage and then I gave it right back. But it seemed like it was more trouble than it was worth. So I'm just going to go here, open up a line for my bishop. And also prepare a knight to f6 hitting this pawn. So he played there immediately. Huh? It's a way of undoubling, I guess. If I um, if I take, I don't have to take though. I could let him take. I could bring my queen out. I'm not really threatening to take there because uh, he takes back with a pawn and it's defended by knight and queen, so it's pretty well defended. If he pushes forward, he could do that. Let's see, we have opposite colored bishops here, interestingly enough. One thing to worry about is I've weakened the dark squares around my uh, presumably uh, my presumed uh, castling position. Could be a problem. So knight f6, he pushes, the knight could go to e4, hitting c3, and also looking at some squares on this diagonal. But he could bring his queen up to d3, chase, chasing the knight and... Uh, hmm. Okay, so we just put the bishop there. How about I push the pawn forward? <clears throat> he can't actually push his pawn forward. Oh, what he could do is put a rook here, chasing my queen back. I should get this knight out though, I think. Knight here, he pushes the pawn. Do I come forward? If he pushes the pawn, I could go to um, d5, hitting his bishop. If he takes first, I can't do that, though. Because <clears throat> his queen will be on that square. So he could take first and then push, and I have to have to find a square for my poor knight. I could go to g4 maybe. And I could play uh, h, yeah, he takes first. The 
on his pen, so maybe he can find a way to attack it. But I was another idea is rook, rook b1. I was planning to put my queen on c7 or c6, hitting this pawn again. But uh, anyway, now when he pushes his pawn forward, it opens up squares for my uh, bishop. So it's not all uh, not all one-sided. It has pluses and minuses, that pawn push. Yeah, I guess uh, if you look at this position, I, my development is, is lagging. I have a minor piece that's still in the back rank, and I haven't castled, so my rooks are not connected. If uh, white can find a way to exploit that, white is probably better. If not, maybe I'm okay. So can I go to e5? That's the question. e4. Or should I go to g4? If I go to g4, he'll have to move his bishop. I like that better. And uh, as I was saying, or trying to say earlier, pawn to h5 defends a knight there and gives a retreating square where it's defended by the rook until I castle anyway and then then the knight could come out to here that would be a good square in this configuration maybe it could do it directly maybe I should just directly go back to uh, h6 immediately with the knight and here that way there's no worries about castling Mm, well, he could chase it away by pushing g5, but that's double-edged. When the... Um... Oh, okay, so he just gives up the bishop. Yeah, when the bishop moves from this diagonal, I have the pawn push with check. And then the knight coming in here, maybe. Or here, not there, because it's uh, the king moved. Yeah, yeah, I guess there was a problem. Yeah. If the bishop moved away, I pushed with check. If the king steps away, then the knight comes here with check, forking the king and the queen, and then at least that wins the exchange. Rook takes knight, queen takes knight. So this way, I'll take off the... Uh, <clears throat> I will take off that bishop, because, as I said, I have these dark squared weaknesses here. Now develop the develop the knight the develop the bishop and get castled <laughs> finally <laughs> better better late than never I could even consider castling queenside, but I guess with this open B file, it's probably not as safe as castling kingside. And the square on G7 does provide uh, an extra square for my king to run to if things get hot on the back rank. So maybe it has some advantages. Just got to be careful. The knight doesn't creep in on the dark squares. That would be dangerous. If the knight comes to h4 hitting my bishop, I might just drop it back here. I could end up exchanging on f5, though. He pushes the pawn, I take, he takes, I take, and then that would open up, <clears throat> open up the g file. My queen, my queen protects the g file. So he just went there directly. Well, I was going to take a pawn. 
<laughs> should I, or should I defend the bishop with the, with the queen? What's he going to do after I take the pawn? He's going to push this pawn, and I'll, I'll take that one too. And I'll take my bishop, and I'll take back. Still haven't castled. <laughs> but I have some material to show for it, at least. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I just play um, queen c6 and rook uh, g8. We will start with this one. So yeah, I might not get castled in this game. So he goes queen f2. I'm not sure what to play there. I guess rook to f8. I mean, I want to play rook g8 and threaten, but the queen is defending and it's attacking on f7. Another idea for white, maybe to double rooks. Maybe he brings this rook over here. Ah, he just, he just spotted that idea. And now he can push this pawn forward. So, um, but I can first threaten mate. Buy myself a little time. Then castle queenside. What else? Okay, say I lift the pawn. I lift the rook. And he takes, I take. Queen there is not possible. There was a problem with this, I thought, but I'm not seeing it right now. Maybe the problem is the pawn push, but I don't have to take. He pushes the pawn. Yeah, that's, the, that's what I was saying. I was saying pawn push, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes, and then the rook comes to the back rank check and he picks up this rook over here, if, yeah, if nothing else. So, but when he pushes a pawn, I don't have to take it. I can push back. Then maybe he sacrifices a rook. But uh, he's got to be careful because I still have this, this coordination going. So he triples. Okay, so I think I'll bring this rook out, threaten, threaten the back rank. And it's maybe one of those rare games where I don't castle the whole time. He can't defend with the rook because I mate. Um, and the threat is just rick back here, check, rick back, queen here, mate. So he needs to bring the queen back, I guess, or that. So rook check on the back rank. He will run here.
Is it useful to chase the king there? Or should I leave it where it is? Not sure. Anyway, so we're defending. Rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, king takes. Got it covered. <laughs> All this trouble for one measly pawn. Ah, he found a check. That's clever. But is that good? Can block with the pawn here, and this is defended by my queen. Yeah, the queen was sitting here at c6 and uh, covering the checks along this diagonal, so I was feeling comfortable about it. I kind of overlooked that. So he's going to that diagonal. And at the moment, at least, I'm no longer threatening mate here. So this rook is free to move. If this rook moves, however, I could take here. And I am just going to take this pawn. Pawn, uh, so rook takes pawn, rook takes, queen takes. And yeah, the queen even defends here. It doesn't defend here. He can grab this pawn. Uh, but then I can check and take this rook. So unless he comes in and mates me, he does come in and mate me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to be careful about that. Um... Okay, let's kick the queen first. Oh no, if I do that, he'll take my rook. Yeah, he's trying to get in on this rank, so let's... um. <clears throat> Keep trying to keep this guy defended so his queen can't get into my back rank here. Ah, the queen has a check again. It's annoying. Yep. Okay, there's two blocks that I could play. If I block with the queen, though, I lose this pawn. I don't want to give that up for nothing. And block with the rook, I guess. Or I could move my king, but that seems like that might be hazardous. But if I uh, self-pin... Okay, <laughs> I'm moving my king. I am moving my king. Oh, 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 I didn't see that. I had to, I had to do that. Okay. I had to do that. That's too bad. <laughs> I was doing pretty well, I thought. <laughs> but I didn't notice. Yeah, so that was a fork. Let's look at this. Right. The check, it was safe when I played the check. Then I did that. He checked me. And that check was a fork. So I had to do here. The problem with this, though, was that he can bring the other rook here. So I think I'm just losing a rook anyway. Well, okay. No, it's rook and queen, and I've got it defended. It's just an uncomfortable pin, but that was that was what had to be played. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah.
Yeah, I can't uh, do much here, can I? The queen is pen, so I could take here, but then he takes my queen, I take his rook. The rook versus queen. See if I can find some kind of fortress draw here. But it's not very likely. There's too many pawns. You need a simple situation with rook and king and some pawns against a queen. And you're okay. But when, when white has so many pawns, and uh, there'll be all these opportunities for checks and things. Probably not good. Well, maybe I can get a passed pawn here too. That's the other idea. I can try four. Yeah, I can't can't defend that pawn, sadly. Can defend that one. Yeah, I'm a little too slow to make this work. You can do this kind of inchworm thing where you bring this up to defend the pawn, then you bring the rook up, and then you bring that pawn up. But uh, it looks like it's just not going to work. Because, uh, yeah, he's just way too fast. Anyway, that was a good game. And uh, so I will upload this. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.